Hi, and welcome to our third video in our GUI screencast series. At the end of the last video, we had our red slider moving and actually telling it where it was moving to. In this video, we're going to look at adding in some functionality for the green and blue as well, so that we can actually retrieve the user's selections for each of those sliders. And then in the following video, we'll look at actually using those to update the color. So let's have a look at our app designer as we left it. Um, so we'll switch back over into design view and we'll set up some callbacks for the other sliders. So just like we did for the red one, we can click on the green one and navigate to the callbacks panel on the right hand side. And what we can do from here is type in the name of a value change function. Now we could create a different function, but there's not really any need. We can just create a single function that all of these sliders link to and update the color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to link it to update color, the one that we've already created and just hit enter. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the blue one. So click on the blue slider and over in the value change function callback, I'm going to select update color. So then I'm going to go over to that function and you can see that nothing's really changed. It's added this comment. So it says now value change function blue slider, green slider, red slider. So it's telling us that this is the value change function for all of these now. So what we can do is we can go in and actually do something with that information. So probably what we would like to do at this point is actually retrieve a value from all of them. So we'll get rid of this code that we had here and we might just sort of display a little heading for each one. So display red and then display the value of the red. So remember we reference the object, which is app.red slider. And then we use the structure notation to reference the property. So in this case, dot value. And we'll do the same thing for green. So I'll give it a little heading and then I'll display the property of app.green slider dot value. And I'll do the same thing for blue. So display app.blue slider in this case dot value. So when I run this now, we'll actually see a little bit of functionality happening from each of our sliders. So I'll just minimize our app developer. It's still giving me warnings about the height of some component, but I'm not too concerned about those. And then we will drag around our sliders. So red should still be doing something because we had that one set up right the first time. And you can see whenever I change that, it's now printing out the red position, the green position and the blue position. So the next step would be to actually use that to update the background color. Uh, we also have the green slider now, which is hopefully doing something. And we can see that it is, as I drag it around, those values are changing and it's printing out the values for everything. And lastly, our blue slider. I should be able to drag that around and see some behavior. And we can see some behavior. It's showing us the values and it's changing as I move it. So that means that we've got each of those callbacks set up correctly. They're all correctly linked to those components that we want them to be linked to. So now the last step really is to actually use those values that we're retrieving from each slider to change this color. So that's what we'll look at in the next video and then we'll wrap it all up. See you then.